I'm streaming. Okay, maybe we need to do some music. I'm gonna let people come in. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'm gonna turn this off. Is that can y'all hear? Let's see. No sound yet. Watching. Can you guys uh, hear us and see us? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm asking them. <laughs> More than soon. Uh, I better go back on mute. All right. It's all good now. Okay, cool. All right, we got 65 people in the house. Hello, everybody. How's it going? They're coming in way too fast. I can't even. Yeah, I know. My phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everything's cool. Mm. So, do you know what the uh, the Schumann resonance is? You ever heard of that? Um, I don't know if I have. Let me show you something real quick. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to, I wish I could put this up on, I wonder if I can do it here. Yeah, okay, hang on. All right, I'm going to pull up the Schumann Residence. You guys just sit tight just for a second. And I'm going to ask uh, Josh about it. He just put this up today. There it is. Oh, wait, let me go back over here. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, so here's a, uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, Eve Alta says it's a solid 13 Hertz the last 24 hours. Uh, Cedar Debbie says the Schumann resonance might, was crazy today. Off the chain today, another one. The blast. So this uh, this is a post from Sandra Walter, and uh, she's a really cool lady, cool sister. She's been doing this stuff for over twenty years. She was actually uh, leaving messages on an answering machine, and people had pagers back in the late nineties to call and get her intel every day. Wow. But a very cool lady. She's been on the show. She's a good friend of ours. So this is a Schumann resonance, and this is the resonance of the Earth, as I understand it, okay, that's okay. being monitored, you know, 24-7. Mm -hmm. uh, the Zoom link, okay, hang on a second. Let me get the Zoom link. But anyway, so that's what it looks like. I'll, I'll be right with you on the Zoom link. Hang on one second. So this whiteout here? Yeah. 
So typically you have activity like that. And as I understand it, the, the natural hertz was like, I don't know, like some low number. Mm -hmm. It never gone over like 25. It's done that many, many times over the last two or three years. Um, hang on, let me see. Okay. And so if you took the white out mm -hmm. and just looked at the blue and had it all the way across, that's pretty much what it looks like. And occasionally, you might have a black line through it. Mm -hmm. And so it's been, this is going back, I think about 24 hours and it's just been a total whiteout. So, which leads me to the question. I know you don't, you haven't heard of the Schumann resonance, but did you feel some kind of energy surge in the last 24 hours? Oh yeah. I think so. It's, I was thinking about it this morning. Uh, because it kind of feels, I felt like this before, but it feels like uh, like you're in a different world. Like like you're here, but reality's not really here. Yeah. And that's, it's weird. I've, I've actually been trying to figure out exactly what it is because I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but I know it has something to do with everything that's been going on yeah um yeah that's what it feels like to me but this isn't the first time it's felt this way no, but i've felt it before yeah yeah like you know and to me it's like it's been happening more mm -hmm. and it's been lasting longer but this yes and i don't know if it's just going back 24 hours or i don't know if it's just because i've been hanging around you <laughs> and morgan and everybody else but um it seems like maybe going back even to the solstice Mm -hmm. uh, which would have been what the 21st or you know I don't know it just seems like a really powerful period mm -hmm. and it seems like uh, what a lot of people are talking about is it's bringing stuff up like okay. bringing up shadow mm -hmm. bringing up feelings anxiety um, mm -hmm. just maybe past memories do you did any of the stuff like that happen to you uh, yeah kind of actually it, uh, I guess what you could call uh, unresolved or not completely resolved issues in my past bingo pop up yeah. during, the, during times like this. So, which that would, yeah, that's an interesting connection. I didn't, I didn't think of that. Well, in this circle where you have mostly, you know, we talked about on the first show, you have a now it's expanding now, but you have probably 35 to 65 year olds, really a lot of it, I think in the early years was 45 to 65, I would say in that age group. So these are people who've had a lot of things happen, obviously, because on the linear scale, they've lived longer, whatever. Mm -hmm. A lot of them seem to have uh, a lot of the same attributes, which is they're born into a family where they're the odd one out. They don't feel like they belong here, uh, all that stuff. But so, so, you know, like what Morgan does the shadow work, uh, the shadows, the inner work has been a big part of it. And it does seem to coincide with these spikes, but this one recently seems to be like a prolonged spike. In fact, I think it's still going on. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like it. Yeah. So what happens when, what happens, and, and, and I think the other reason this is really relevant mm -hmm. is because of what you said first, which was what this energy feels like to you is like you're, you're here, but you're not here. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it's, it's, I don't even think we could put it in the words, but so there, with that yeah. element in there as well, and then these things coming up, a lot of people in these circles feel that, that, um, you know, resolving these things inside mm -hmm. of us brings in more of that, that feeling that you're talking about where you're, you're, it's so different, so new, so higher selfish, I guess, self, mm -hmm. that it feels, you feel a little bit out of place and a little distorted. So yeah. what do you do when something like that happens to you? I mean, on a personal level, how do you, do you just go well, quiet and think or? A lot of times, yeah. but I, I tend to go with the flow of the energy. So whatever, whatever I'm feeling, whatever comes up, I, I just kind of go with it. And if it's like some partially unresolved or unresolved issues, then I confront them and work through them. Uh, but really there's no, 
no simple way to put so, it. <laughs> so you don't run from them? No. I well, mean, running from it doesn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, so at a, at a, uh, at a minimum, I'm just saying you, mm -hmm. at a minimum, you sit with it, you go with it, you feel into it. Mm -hmm. And I guess in, in time, it, it just integrates and kind of resolves itself. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I think people could relate to that here. Definitely. No doubt. Um, yeah. And so like when you, cause I think another thing that people talk about too is somebody close to them or their friend or their partner or whatever, they can see them going through it. So it's not them going through it, but they see somebody else going through it. Right. Um, uh, yeah, and, then, and and I think it's a challenge to, do you say something? Do you not say something? You know, do you even know what you're saying if you say something to a person who's going through it? I mean, is it different for everybody? Yeah, you know? it's it's kind of different for, for everybody. Um, a lot of times if I notice it, I won't say much of anything. But there's, like if I have something come to me that I feel the need to say, uh -huh. then... I, I say it, whether I understand the meaning that they're getting from it or not, I know that they're getting the meaning they need to from it. Right. It's goes back to the go with the flow thing. Just whatever the energy communicates with me. So um, like when you, so when you go through it mm -hmm. and, and you really, you're kind of doing the same thing with that person. You're just going with the flow, whatever comes. Yeah. Do you have to go down a rabbit hole to try to resolve these things or you just go into the energy and don't fight it, don't resist it and see what comes up? A little of both sometimes. It's, it depends, but I mean, if you just kind of go with it, don't fight it, let it kind of see where it takes you. Yeah. A lot of times it'll be a lot smoother getting it resolved. Uh, but there's still times where it can be a lengthy process. Yeah. Yeah. And I think another thing that people are talking about too, these last, especially these last couple of months is that these things um, that have taken, I mean, it could go back a couple of years. It might take up two or three weeks or a month. Mm -hmm. Something could even take months, but it seems like these last couple of months, this stuff's coming in with a great intensity and almost like an urgent frequency. And, uh, and it seems like people are being able to go through it quicker, although it doesn't mean mm -hmm. it's easier. Yeah. Now the, the progression of everything, and that's part of time collapsing. Our perception of time is collapsing. So things that would normally take a longer length of time yeah. don't seem to take as long now, but they still take as much energy. Yeah. And that's, that's what it really equates to. It's not necessarily the time investment. It's, the energy and the intent yeah. you put behind it. Yeah. That's how you can do an extremely complicated spell and blink of an eye. Yeah. Something extremely powerful. Do you think that we're being cleaned out right now? I mean, in, in, in order for a higher energy, I mean, people are talking about 2020. We talked about this a little bit. People talk about an event and the flash and all that mm -hmm. stuff, which, you know, we talked about that. Yeah. But I mean, do you think collectively that just from how you're feeling is, is it really, really, really going to amp up here soon? I believe so. It's that's what it feels like. Uh, a few, at least a year back, it may have been two years ago. Now I was talking to uh, Darren and Teal and I told them that my prediction of it was that things were going to progress at a near exponential point. It was, going to start building more and more and more and at first you wouldn't really notice it but as it got closer to the exponential breakout uh -huh. it was going to get a lot more intense a lot more consistent and people were going to be forced to notice it yeah and then we'll cross it a threshold where it enters true exponential yeah. and then everything's going to take off and that's when we're going to see the big changes yeah and we're close to that now yeah i think so I think it would make sense to me that you'd see some individuals and maybe even small groups start to break out first, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, I think we're already seeing that, but it's kind of hard to see beyond the spectrum of, mm -hmm. you know, 
how much you can expose yourself to, you know, five senses. Right. But um, yeah, th it, th it seems like that, you know, I'm reading stories and watching people and some of the things they're doing mm -hmm. uh, and how, um, you know, tight the connection is with what they're doing, like traveling places like Morgan and I, or whatever, just alignment, alignment that, it, that is involving the physicality both ge you know, geographically, mm -hmm. but also physicality in terms of, of the, higher, the higher senses and let's say the five senses experiencing things uh, at, an, at a level that where this energy and this guidance and direction is, is the focus of these people's lives. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's kind of very atypical of, of what's been going on, as we all know, you know, with the conditioning and the conveyor belt society yeah. mentality and that type of thing right yeah um exactly right. so like i mean as far as as far as you know i mean and i and i we might i might have asked you this before but is there a as far as you know is there a specific purpose to what we're going through and i and i do remember us talking about this a little bit uh but we just have to repeat it because i already started it yeah. Or is it, or, <laughs> or is it just strictly a natural cycle that's, that happens and happens and happens? Well, again, I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a part of a natural process of things, but I think there is a point behind it. And the point I believe would be experience. Uh, just the different, the different things that you feel, the different circumstances you come into contact with how you react to those and how that affects you and how you affect them. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's the real point behind it all. Yeah. But yeah. That we're affecting everything, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of what effects come at us, we were alchemists and transformers. Yep. You know, uh, when we were talking about that a minute ago, about what you said at the top of the show, uh, my friend Beth, she says, uh, to me, it feels like when Neo was walking through the crowds and the lady in the red dress walks by. Yes. You just acknowledge it or notice it and then you just keep moving. Yes. Which, you know, that I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the best way I've found to handle it. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of, I'm probably going to get in trouble, but <laughs> it kind of reminds me like when you get really stoned mm -hmm. and you go out into public and everything is like, you know, really, really enhance and yeah. you notice a little quirk and you just keep going because you don't want anyone to see that you're not cool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> keep your balance. Yes. That's a good, that's a good microsoft. Uh, anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to put them up um, and we'll get to them one by one, hopefully. Uh, people are talking about a lot of things that have happened over the last week or so. Uh, it, this is a good comment by Truce. Uh, a lot is happening in her area. It is important to be there for others by staying calm. I think that's yeah, that's probably the best thing we can do because I don't think, absolutely yeah because I mean trying to get our arms around all this stuff is virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. It is impossible, especially if you have you know traditional three D ish type functions and roles and that type of thing. Absolutely, you know. Um, so just staying calm is, I guess that's probably the most basic way you can keep an antenna mm -hmm. or stay true to the antenna of your, of your energy of your body. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a very useful trick being yeah. able to stay calm. So in like, in terms of in your own journey, is it, what's more likely to get, um, askew like emotional body mental body physical body because i mean you have obviously a connection since you were very young mm -hmm. on this what we would call the spiritual or the spirit scientific side or whatever but uh yeah personally for me uh the physical would probably be the first to slip away yeah that's uh because it's just I don't know. I've never really been attached to it. Yeah. So I feel like it would be the first thing to slip. Uh, well, I say that then again, my emotions have already kind of slipped away too. Yeah. I don't feel them like I used to. Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot of people talk about that as they elevate mm -hmm. from a human perspective, they become less almost emotionless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost almost like a computer. It's more logical, but you're operating on a logic that not everybody can see. We got a, a question, and I guess we missed it on the first show. Why is the Earth of unique importance at this time if the whole universe is at a transformational point? Well, that would be because of the way the energy flows. Uh, the way that the energy flows through the uh, through the galaxy. <laughs> there you go. You're on TV, Madison. Can you say hi to everybody? <laughs> say hi? No. Okay. You can say hi to everyone. No. The, the way the energy flows through the galaxy, through this universe, it's it moves. There's this, We're at a very important gateway, a very important focal point in that galaxy. So the things that happen here and the way it affects the energy here it makes a huge difference overall yeah. and moving further out. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Madison? What do you think's going on in the world today? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? You're going to hide? No. No? Yeah, so going back to that. Um, Join it in, huh? It's Victor Hodges says, are either of you sensing major changes in this energy? Well, it's, it's constantly shifting. That's, that's part of it. Uh, that's the whole point behind it. Uh, we're going to be picking up changes throughout the entire thing. And those changes are going to be different each time we pick them up and as it progresses. So, yeah. And I would, um, yeah, I would say on my end, make sure I got that right. Major changes in this energy. Well, that's what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's all kind of tying together. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I can speak for the last. You know, a lot of people, uh, their experiences started give or take a year or two, 2012. Mm -hmm. A significant number of people. I mean, there's a lot of people like. That have been doing a lot longer but if i look at that just going back to that time period it you know it's uh there was a there was both a huge cleaning out before it started mm -hmm. you know i wasn't conscious of, of the things i was conscious of later almost like this period now yeah like like at the beginning of that seven year period or right before that seven year period my life went through six months of just fast and furious emotional, physical, mental traumas. I mean, the whole nine yards mm -hmm. and uh, upheaval. And then we step into the 2012 and I'm, I don't know why I'm bringing this up now, but it makes sense. And now that's what people are talking about now mm -hmm. that like you were talking about stuff comes up to be cleared because we're about to amp it up again. I, that's how mm -hmm. I would answer it. I would say that, that whatever's happened through 2019, mm -hmm. 2020 is going to go into a much uh, more exponential or dramatic, you yes. know, uh, enhancement of the energy, mm -hmm. which means more every day and comprehensively more every day. So a faster rate and a fuller rate. Let's see. You got anything else on that one? No, that, I think that covered it okay. pretty well. That's, uh, let's see. that's exactly what I think on it too. My dear friend, the uh, Kauai auntie Milana, uh, she says, uh, most intense time for me in 30 years. And she moved to Kauai th over 30 years ago she by is. guidance and, mm -hmm. and uh, jumped off the cliff, as she says. Uh, she says, Sometimes maybe ever, to. yeah, she says, maybe uh, the most ever, doing all I can to stay centered and breathing. Nice to hear others feeling all this. Nice to be with y'all. Yeah. Let's see. So she's feeling it too. Mm -hmm. There's another one. Something happening today when I feel, I just feel like knocked out and get up to meditate, even feel exhausted, but feel called to do. And what I feel this wave is ready, is really heavy and thick and clearing so much. So 
and then they keep going. Mm -hmm. So uh, powerful energies and a quickening in the clearing process. So this is all, yeah. this is all congruent. Falling right along in with my expectations of things. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be interesting to see how it progresses. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. You know, we went and saw uh, that Star Wars movie last night, and I'm not really big into that. I, mean, I watched it when they first came out, but I, yeah. I haven't, this was the ninth one. Mm -hmm. I think I've probably seen three. Uh, and so it was interesting for a lot of reasons, but energetically speaking, mm -hmm. there was a lot of really cool stuff happening. Uh, yeah. And, I, and I, I'm not, like I said, a big Star Wars person. But one of the things that occurred, and, and I don't want to, but it was a universal, uh, you know, you talked about resolving or things that weren't resolved that were coming up mm -hmm. on a personal level. And I guess that, that as an individual goes, so goes a collective. In this movie, the energy of the universal, mm -hmm. both in non-physical, the force, you know, and in yeah. the physical with community is what brought uh, resolution and alignment. So, mm -hmm. you know, that to me seems inevitable with the way these energies are going yes because i would think there would be you know and having somebody uh, somebody who witnessed the 60s on tv you know the 70s 80s 90s i reckon the whole nine yard mm -hmm. uh it would seem to me that uh if people weren't handling their stuff we'd be in mass chaos right now yes absolutely but, you know absolutely it's uh it's it would i don't i don't know if there's any other way it would be able to play out though like uh we're i think we're here because we have to be here yeah and everything has played out the way it has because it has to yeah and it's really comforting honestly because you still have that whole free will aspect but you can go knowing that the universe will take care of you yeah you can yeah you can totally scrape the bottom of the pits of hell mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you may not know it at the time but yeah we always come back absolutely yeah i think uh but you know if you look at even the last century mm -hmm. you know when you had you know world war one industrial revolution world war one and da, 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 all that stuff space program all that stuff there has been a lot of chaotic cycles pushes almost like pushes you know, like uh, say the 60s when JFK got taken out and, you know, and, and his brother and the other two leaders. And then so, you know, there just seems like there was a pushback. Now it seems like the swell is too powerful for any pushback, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's been a lot of suppression for a long time on all of this. And anything that stays in the shadow or is in the shadows won't stay in the shadows for long. And all of everything that we're experiencing now it's all been pushed to the to the shadows to the outside of our perspective for so long yeah that it's finally built up to a point where it can't be ignored now yeah S swinging back and centered on the individual mm -hmm. uh jenny smith always has these great quotes it's from bill wood project looking glass mm -hmm. a great awakening cannot be stopped and my friend Barb Bradley, she says, more of who I am is being revealed mm -hmm. along with my purpose. Things I suspected are now confirmed. I think that's another big one, too, yes. is people, especially older people, and it actually probably applies to you, too, which is like, get me out of here, man. Like, you know, I've had enough of this yeah. stuff. How long is it going to take to get some reciprocation? Like, the universe mm -hmm. knows my heart. But why do I keep falling into these uh, piles of quicksand yeah you know but that seems to be lifting i mean i don't yeah, know it's yeah. it's it seems to be like because i i have i've i've experienced a lot of that mine has not been a smooth trip for sure <laughs> but i think <laughs> right. that's i think that's a general consensus yes so yeah but yeah it's it is starting to ease up it seems like and the more you just kind of go with it, it seems like the easier things are and yeah. the less it tries to fight back. Well, I like what you said earlier, you know, and in contrast with being married to Morgan or being, you know, whatever mm -hmm. 
in terms of the shadow work where you talked about easing into something mm -hmm. and, and, and then the other method that, which has been very good for me is going down the rabbit hole yeah. and identifying what I didn't know within my subconscious basically. Mm -hmm. But I think it's kind of both in that when these things come, come at us, you know, uh, in the past, we've immediately want to resist them. Yes. And, and that in itself, you know, at some point we realize that we are creating the chaos ourselves mm -hmm. because we're resisting something that's just like everything else. Yes. <laughs> and the only thing that's making it yep. uh, scary is our own thoughts, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our fear of change. This is a good question. I'm only going to bring it up because I think I've got a decent answer. Uh, the, Heidi, thank you. Does anyone else know where Todd is getting this information and knowledge sending love from Southern Maine? Uh, Todd is just a conduit. Todd has done 1,600 of these shows and uh, communicated with a lot of people over the years um, prior to that. And so I just, like everybody else, I'm just like a sponge and I don't think I have anything different. Uh, we all have our roles. I think my role is to be a promoter and bring people into the circus tent to meet people like this and to, to hear questions like that. Um, but because uh, I see, I see, I see really, it's interesting in these shows, when I sit down with people now, like the last thousand shows, I it's a their higher self and their human aspect are both there. And sometimes there's more, but right. that's typically it. And so like if the human I see their their pureness, and then I see their strengths and their shadow mm -hmm. a lot of times. And it's an interesting kind of thing because what's important to me is it, it, I know it's changing me, right? you know, without instruction and that type of stuff. But thank you for the question. Let's see what else we got. And if you feel like talking, just keep going. Yeah. 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 Uh, Sita Divi, this is kind of cool, we're back and forth. Yeah. We have to remember we are clearing on a deeper level every time. The energies are so intense. Also, new soul jumps on new souls jump on board and are awakening. So it makes the sense, it makes sense the intensity of energies to increase. That's a very good point. Yeah. That's a very good point. And that's that's why I was figuring that as it progressed, it was going to reach a point of exponential growth. Yeah. Because there is a tipping point. Uh, each individual can do a lot by themselves, but as a collective, uh, we're when we work as a collective, we're closer to that oneness. Yeah. So it's much more powerful. Yeah. Yeah, and I think about um, so the light. What was it? Two nights ago, mm -hmm. I think two nights ago. Uh, that day started. We had two shows. They ended up being with two incredible uh, ladies and that we hadn't met before. So the first show starts and the internet went out totally. Like we started 30 minutes late and it's not gone out here and, and, and there's good service here, great service. Mm -hmm. So that happened Then during the show, it went out again. And then Aaron got it fixed. And then the second show came mm -hmm. and we we're in a rush to do it. We're still a few minutes late. And my computer just just rebooted, or restarted, right? When the show started. And then in that show, the internet went out. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I'm bringing this up is because, you know, people, sometimes when that's happened on shows, people be like, oh, they're trying to suppress you and da, da, da. And I'm not saying that that's right or wrong. What I am saying is, is that I, I can say that I've experienced situations like that. And it seems like what she's talking about is what happened. Mm -hmm. There was more energy coming on board and there's so much energy. Yeah. It's just like, you know, you don't know what to do with it. Yeah. And, and energetically just kind of explodes and weird stuff happens. But Oh, absolutely. I've, I've noticed several times during meditations and when, as I'm building up my energy field and everything around me, that it'll actually affect electrical equipment. Like lights mm. will start flickering, my phone won't work yeah. properly, messages won't yeah. come through, stuff like that. Right on. So it's because it's all it's all the basic saying energy is energy. It may take a different form, but it all affects each other. Right on. Uh, Geraldine says, 
Is anyone else having a feeling of being pulled toward a particular future rather than moving along a regular timeline? Keep, I keep thinking of a Terrence McKenna quote, the universe is not being pushed from behind, it's being pulled from the future. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty interesting quote. You got anything on that one? Well, I mean, it's it's very possible. It's I've felt like that before myself. And what I usually find out that it is, is a future version of myself helping guide my past self. Uh, it's like I said before, magic doesn't know time. So you can be right now and you can change your past or guide your past self yeah and it, it that could very well be it and it could also be higher self doing that which i guess could be one in the same honestly future self and higher self yeah so yeah but it's it could also be different spirit guides too yeah. there's it could be any number of things but i do believe because i felt that before myself so I do yeah. believe that that's what it is. There's nothing behind us propelling us forward. Or oh, I agree with that. Being pulled along. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we're being pulled along. I don't know. If, but I know we're not being pushed from behind. Oh, well, yeah. Um, Sometimes it feels like you're being drug across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by your fingernails. <laughs> yeah. On concrete. Uh, Truce has another comment, which is really very inspirational. Uh, she says, I'm 63 years old. And I have never experienced this, but it is the best experience of my life. I found myself. They say the apocalypse, you know, the definition is unveiling, hmm. you know? Yes. And I mean, I don't know. I, I guess in so many words, how could you know, whatever you want to call it, how could you know God if you don't know yourself or goddess or source or whatever? Yeah, exactly. Let's see here. The, cl the cleaning of memories requires a lot of concentration and persistence and is an unending job. But the result is what is called zero limits, a state where one is free from the past and suffused with divine intelligence and love. That's from Dr. Hugh Lynn, courtesy of Jenny Smith. I like that term, zero limits. You know, people talk mm -hmm. about zero pointing, yeah, but zero limits. I like that. I think it sounds better. I do too. Yeah. Let's see here. Somebody had a question. I don't know what that's about. I just saw. It. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the compliment. Everybody. Those were nice. Uh, they're coming so fast. Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, Marua Porn. Thank you. Crittenden. Thank you for the question. Is it possible to see ourself in another dimension? I have some visions seeing myself in, the different, in a different way of leaving. It has been three nights in the different place. Yeah, no, you can, you can definitely see your other selves. Um, you can interact with them, talk to them, communicate with them, whatever. But another thing that you can do, and I've done it quite a bit, is you can go in and kind of like switch places with them, I guess you could say, and temporarily go along yeah. with them in the vessel. Yeah. And that's that's always fun too. <coughs> I'm gonna uh, talk. Yeah, I remember what we're gonna talk about now. Okay. Keep going. But yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely possible. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, and a lot of people always want to put limits on it and stuff, but there is anything is possible. There is no limits. So anything you experience, it's it's not just you. It's guaranteed that other people experience it too. We have a uh, we have a bold. I now know what we were going to talk about. We're, we're not going to forget that. You know what I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah. Okay, Julianne Lindine, and you don't have to answer. Okay. And we don't have to do, we can do whatever we want. We have free will, right? Exactly. But we appreciate you asking this question. She says, Absolutely. she says, I watched the show on Christmas Eve in which Joshua and his dad both spoke. Uh, what's your relationship like with your dad? I think it would be amazing to be able to discuss the awakening with family. Yeah, it's, 
it's gotten a lot easier. Uh, like I said, used to, I didn't talk to anyone. I occasionally tell my mom a little bit, but even then it wasn't a whole lot, nothing really specific. Uh, over the past few years though, that's really changed. I've been able to actually open up about everything. Yeah. And there's been some amazing conversations and it's, it's been an awesome growing experience too. And it's, if you can have an experience like that, I, I would suggest it. Wow. And so, yeah. So what's it like? Well, you know, what's it like be even being able to be, to be in a family mm -hmm. where you're actually able to discuss with siblings, mother, father, and, and you know, others that are around to be able to talk about this stuff. I mean, it's, it's a little different. It's not really what I expected, um, but it's, it teaches me as much as I feel like I teach them or they feel like I teach them, I guess I should say. I don't really feel like I teach anybody anything, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm more in it, try to learn as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, but it is, it's, it's different. It's awesome. There's, it's an actual safe space kind of thing. Yeah. It's how I think it really should be, how families should be. Yeah. And not just like blood relatives, but all family. Like even your friends that are close enough, you call family, they're family. Yeah. That's big. That's big. Mm -hmm. I almost hate to change the subject, but I'm trying to keep up with these questions. No, I understand. E Eve Alta is going back to what you talked about. We'll go back to that too. Okay. Uh, when you were talking about, or the question came up about, can you experience yourself in other dimensions? And then you added to it. She said, so when you're doing that, when you're taking your physical, I think is what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Are you switching into a past life body or a parallel life persona? Thank you, she says. That's a little of both. I don't really, personally, I don't really distinguish between it. I'm just... It's gotten to the point now it's happened so much. I just, I open my eyes and I'm, well, oh, I'm in a different world. <laughs> so let's, let's find out what's going on here. Yeah. It's like, why uh, am I walking down the aisle in Walmart? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just happened to me. Oh yeah. I got very disoriented. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, yeah. I've, I've woken up on cobblestone streets before. <laughs> That's <laughs> interesting. I have two after. Mm -hmm. A hard night of uh, running with the devils. <laughs> so, so, uh, Heidi asked, uh, any thoughts about the passing of our spiritual hero, Ram Das? I think, I mean, it, anything and everything that could be said about Ram Das, you know, has been said. Or, uh, you know, he's, what can you say? Yeah. If you got anything on that. That's... I mean, you're right. There's not a whole lot else that can be said. Comment, my children are more receptive than adults. My kids, mm -hmm. my kids are on two. Um, you've got kids. Mm -hmm. So that's part of that family circle. Yes. Obviously they're, they're young enough that you, you, well, I don't know. You're gonna, the conversation may not be the same verbally. I mean, but energetically, mm -hmm. like what do they add to the mix? I mean, are they, are they being pulled from the front? Are they pulling everybody from the front or are they locked arm in arm with them? You know, I've, I've not really figured that one out yet, but they've, they've definitely taught me a lot. Uh, I, I don't know. It's not, I knew it was going to be an experience, but it's not exactly what I expected. Uh, and I love the unexpected. Yeah. It's, They've taught me a huge amount, though. Uh, just just sitting down, playing with them, and talking to them. Just yeah. some of the little comments that they'll throw out here and there. Like, if you pay attention to it, there's some big messages in those. 
and there's a lot that I've learned from them. Yeah. Ain't and, that the truth? <laughs> I, oh yeah. I'm, I'm hoping to keep learning. Too. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. Trevor, thank you. Says, can another person's soul apologize for the wrongdoing to the victim's soul? Okay, can another person's soul apologize for the wrongdoing mm -hmm. of its present incarnation mm -hmm. to the victim's soul? I'm not really sure what he means. But um, but I, a disincarnated, let's say a disincarnated soul yeah. that you had a problem with, can they have, I don't know, apologize, visit you? You know, is that them you're talking to? Is it you you're talking to? I mean, well, I mean, it's yes, that can happen, and it's kind of it's kind of both. Uh, the guardians used a, a technique to be able to kind of see each other like that uh it was a kind of modified telepathy i guess you could call it uh -huh. but and that's similar to what that is or what i'd assume that he's talking about and it's it is them but it's their non-conscious state it's i guess you would say it's their higher self or yeah. at least a self that's higher than what they're yeah. at now yeah. in the physical conscious right yeah and on that note uh barb bradley says it seems most of my guides are aspects of me mm -hmm. they have come into my field to help me to grow and ascend some stay longer than others they never really leave i can set an intent to connect with any of them mm -hmm. yeah i know exactly how that is um in constant communication with a lot of different me's yeah right yeah i get confused because you're standing there and i'm here mm -hmm. you know i mean there still seems to be it's weird because we're going from a duality to a trinity energy mm -hmm. yet you would think you know i'm gonna see you me and you and all that i don't know it's just uh, it intrigues me that you hold that space and i hold this space yeah i know what you mean here's a here's a question we we don't really hit on a lot well we do in these shows but it does come up a lot in uh disclosure and conspiracy circles and light mm -hmm. worker and whatever but so it'd be a good one to, to address uh i've always wondered how do we actually change our society and those who are in charge do we just sit back as i have seen some things that say like oh as an ascended master people understand everything is perfect and do nothing but then who are the ones who will do something? Or is it the spiritual unseen practices enough? So that's, you know, maybe, can you say fluffy love and light to everything and go about your business? Or I guess to the other end of her question, what, how do we actually change our society and those who are in charge? That's, that's actually a really good question. Um, Cause I've, I've pondered that a lot myself uh, years, a few years ago now is when I finally, I guess, dropped it. You could say it's not, it's not a one or the other kind of thing. There's a balance in all things. So for every person that focuses on the spiritual, there's going to be people that focus on the physical. If we balance that out, then everybody can kind of come together on it. Um, yes if you do focus on the energy of it it will eventually come together but if you only focus on the energy just know that there is going to be some i guess pushback on it so it's it's a balanced thing yeah but you can you can focus more on the energy than the physical it's yeah it's all a perspective yeah yeah I agree with that. I think I've seen it work both ways. Mm -hmm. I think energetically it works much better. Yeah. Uh, and you and you learn, you refine the method. It's no different than you saying you open your eyes, you close your eyes, and you're there somewhere yeah. else already. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also think that how do you change all that? At least from from my perspective, is by changing myself. 
really. Yeah. And I know that sounds cliche, but it worked in the smaller circles of my life. Mm -hmm. So you got to believe it's like ripples in a pond, you know, and this all is about self uh, awareness, self responsibility, mm -hmm. uh, taking on owning, um, you know, your alchemic, magical, creative abilities. Yeah. Um, somebody said here, can we clear shadows or change timelines by simply being the witnessing observer without judgment? Example, like when I notice a trigger in myself and just let my human have its moment uh, and witnessing myself in that moment, if that makes sense. So it's similar to what you said in the beginning, right. that when you feel energy coming at you, you just kind of go with it. You don't resist it mm -hmm. and see what comes. Yeah. That's, yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean like physical responses to that energy. Yeah. It's just like acknowledge it and process it and feel it. Yeah. And so the question is, can you clear it or bring it into alignment? Mm -hmm. And she uses the example of like a trigger, like yeah. I get triggered. Yeah. Now, well, that's that's part yeah. of that's part of the process of clearing it. Yeah, is acknowledging it because that's the first step. Once you acknowledge it, then you're on the right path. Yeah. After you acknowledge it, you can embrace it. Yeah. And embracing it will help you better understand it. Yeah. Once you understand it, you can change it easier. Yeah, and I guess the way you could find out too, engage it, is if it keeps happening, mm -hmm. you probably need to go down the rabbit hole with a yes. big shovel. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, this is an interesting question, and we we are taking all comers here. So, Liana says it's like envisioning. Uh, oh, I misunderstood it, but uh, she's talking about envisioning the human vessel on a table, laying flat to be examined, and one is surrounded by a team of light beings. They're all aspects of one who is being examined. Yeah, that's, you know, in the yeah. micro, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought she was going to go with, you know, has anyone experienced that? I mean, how many people have a memory of being on a ship or being on a medical table surrounded by light beams or other things, you know? Right. Yeah. I feel like there is one, one encounter that I had heard about back in the guardians but there are so many stories i can't keep track of them all yeah yeah i think there's a lot of people have talked about it mm -hmm. um here's another one i've heard a couple of stories about it yeah i've 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 heard a lot of stories on the show and oh yeah you know yeah yeah i've heard okay. you know yeah enough to something's happening right and then you start getting into is it the human you know is it human made is it a human program or the, you know all that stuff yeah. Whatever, but, yeah. Uh, 111 in the house. Okay. Monica Ramirez, how much is enough with your family? I try to forgive and forgive, but it feels like never ending. I feel respecting myself. I've had enough. And I'd say, I am so. <laughs> Choose yourself. Yeah. You know, but. Absolutely. It's, yes, I, I was raised family first, but there are limits. Uh, some people aren't going to change, at least not without serious, serious events happening. And you probably don't want to be a part of that. Yeah. Uh, if nothing else, when in doubt, just step back. Step back and try to look from an outside perspective. Uh, if you can get a, cl a clearer picture from a different perspective, that'll, that'll tell you everything you need to know. Yeah. Yeah, I guess at the end of the day, the, that's where we've all been pushed. If you read these stories and hear these people come on the show, you know, uh, even like what you just said, I mean, it, even yeah. some of these young people that came on here recently, they heard a calling. Their family may or may not have understood it or supported it, yet they still continue to move on. And, and in the end, chose themselves. And when they and when they or we don't, things, you know, those triggers and loops and the chaos that 
we think is coming from somewhere else continues yeah. and until we, you know, yeah. Okay. I finally got through all these uh, questions and comments. Oh, wow. So we were talking about, um, so in the past shows, you talked about a planet that you created. Yes. And, and I'm just going to be a little bit more explicit in case there's anybody that just, I don't even want to get left behind. So a planet that he's created in dimension, which is as, this is me talking, as real as us sitting here, because yep. everything is real. Mm. Um, and then you were talking about how, we were talking about uh, doing some broadcasts or some stuff that you wanted to do, that you were planning on doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things was creating a portal to your planet for other people to enter through basically i think that's what it was yeah i mean people can go there right now but not not like i'm wanting i'm wanting to open up what i'm what i refer to as a physical gateway mm. where you can step through it in this physical form and then be there in that physical in this physical form and it's it's something I've experienced before. I know it's possible. So I just got to figure out how to crack the gate. Mm. And yeah, it's, it's close. I can see it. It's one of the overlays that I can see is my mm. planet. Wow. So I know it's close. And if it's happening with you, it's got to be happening with other people. Mm -hmm. Leanna says it's coming. Josh, it's coming. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and so like, yeah, we're, I think that's part of this, the ironic irony of where we've been and where we're probably going, mm -hmm. you know, is we're here saying, oh, when is there going to be money in the bank and no more problems and the government's going to get their shit together and all that stuff. And I think what we're actually head walking into is this type of existence, this, this multi-dimensional reality where we can all play together yep. and un, uninterrupted and, you know, uh, in a non-chaotic way, basically, yep. unless you choose that you want to experience that, which mm -hmm. I think that's what we all did choose when we came down here. Yeah. You know, initially I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know how, I've always been fond of the idea of breaking the system. So, yeah. Well, yeah, because it would only make sense. And I think mm -hmm. that's another reason that we came down here because we got bored. Yeah. You know, and so you develop a system. I mean, how many, how many people, I mean, some people become masters of something in their life, like a piano mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah. But how many times do you put something, you build something and then, you know, then you start again? You well, know, we like challenge. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, look at the video games we play. Yeah. A lot of them are designed to be challenging because we like challenge. So it only makes sense that on a higher perspective, we'd still like challenge. We'd still be curious. Yeah. So we create a system yeah. to challenge ourselves. Exactly. And that's what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. I think, I think, I think so too. I'm not trying to. But I believe that's what we're doing here. And so, that's, that's why I believe experience is the main key to this yeah. existence. Yeah. Because that's, it's the challenge. Yeah. And you're going to carry the wisdom of that experience mm -hmm. either consciously or beyond the incarnation uh, or both. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, so here's another one. Geraldine says, the day before that show, I had a sensation and memory in meditation of having co-created a planet with my partner. I believe very, very powerful creative aspects are wishing to come through. And mm -hmm. you know, when I met uh, Morgan, we got on the phone. She didn't want to, but she did because the higher whatever made her get on. Mm -hmm. But so when we got on the phone, I said, I don't know, because we had, we had kind of message the night before and we merged and some things happened whatever yeah and i said i don't know what the hell's going on here you know but i look at you i can see where we met in dimension i can see who your father was in dimension mm -hmm. and i can remember we have a planet it's a green and purple planet and it's got all these animals and i you know and i'm saying this 
you know, getting out of bed, coming out of dream state where, you know, there's probably more, you know, more alignment and more truth, more reality than this space that we're in here. But anyway, so I think this is a uh, very doable thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I've, I've experienced it before. So I've, this isn't the only dimension I've physically been in. Oh yeah. So how, for, for anyone before they ask, how or, or what, what, what could you give us in terms of how do you take your physicality into another dimension? Uh, well, when it happened to me, it was a catalyst space. Uh, there was something, a, a crystal from that dimension okay. that was still here. And it transported me. Right on. over there now although did, getting back was a different story it was mm -hmm. did you get lost i mean did it you, was the one-way thing it was a one-way thing yeah <laughs> yeah how I had did to you figure out a way back oh you had to figure out a way back whoa yeah. whoa yeah that was a bit of a pain but unfortunately that was one way too i was trying to figure out how to get a two-way system going but i'd have to build a gate on this end to get that operational and we don't have the technology for that right now so so but i mean in these energetic dimensional um you know whatever experiences mm -hmm. uh i wanted to use a word that's you know moving like you know like like uh, journeying or visiting right um it, it it i mean it would it would seem that at some point any technology that we need could we not make it? Well, I guess we would make it in the energetic field, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Here we go. And it's uh, it's it's like uh, the technology that you see on science fiction shows. Uh, as soon as we come up with the idea, we we've, we've made the we've created the means for that technology to exist. Right. So it's just a matter of us deciding All right. when to get there. All right. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Hello, Aiden. Would you like to say hello to everybody? <laughs> say hi to everybody. Good to see y'all too. Well, you that's can't you. See everybody see here? Yeah, there you are, right there. there. But there's people watching that. You're on TV. Mm -hmm. You want to say hi? <laughs> hey. Would you like to tell us what's going on in the world today? No. <laughs> Do you believe in angels? Hey, no. no. Angels no? are not real. <laughs> I don't think you're real. Okay. Oh. okay. Angels aren't real, huh? That's what's not real. All, all right, let's see. Here we go. <laughs> I guess they wanted to be included. <laughs> no, that's okay. That was cool. Oh, yeah. I love it. Uh, so Candace says, Candace is a really cool chick that came on a couple of weeks ago, okay. 33 years old, raising four kids, doing this yeah. thing. Uh, you would relate to her very well. I am connected to a galactic etheric crystal that I connect to with a few soul family. It is like a honing beacon. That sounds like the same energy of you when you're talking about with the guardians mm -hmm. creating that kind of telepathic yeah. place or space or mm -hmm. vibration. Yeah. Yeah. And different different guardians experimented with different things too in that aspect as well as well as every other aspect yeah so there there were multiple methods that i got to learn about to do different things right on uh pamela langoni i did not see it but i will find it and i will get back with you and anyone else that's written i'll try my best but i will find yours um liana was talking about more and more new inventions will be in public downloads yeah. from entities not human and mm -hmm. i would i think that's important i mean you know beyond the hey what's been hidden from us and all that stuff yeah i mean the the uh the chief architects of the technology that the nazis had in world war ii mm -hmm. Uh, Werner von, von Braun and another guy I can't remember they actually have videotape for both of them talking about how they in an interview how they would not have had the 
uh, they didn't have the expertise that they actually got it from, I believe he said, uh, either other higher civilization or higher dimension, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. So it's yeah, now those, there. those German scientists, a number of them were actually pretty open with where they got that information and yeah. it wasn't from this planet. No, it was not. And I, I've, I've always found that interesting too. It made me wonder what else they knew. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that'll be interesting. You know, what really happened? You know, what's going on in Antarctica? What happened in yeah. World War II? You know, all that stuff. I mean, it'll be interesting, but I still think that that the, it's like that other thing I was talking about. We're looking at that stuff, maybe, you know, like what's going to change? How's it going to change? When we're actually on the cusp, you know, on the very edge of taking a huge leap mm -hmm. where I think, I really believe, and I ask people on the show, do you think we're going to see teleportation by location, magic, what we call magic, Yeah. you know, alchemy, uh, you know, supernatural things. And, and a, a lot of people will say, and I respect them, I, I, I might see that in my lifetime. I might not see that. It'll be 10 years. It'll be, but I honestly believe it could happen at any time when so, it hits that, mm -hmm. that tipping point you're talking about. Yep where that energy and, and, and maybe that's a good example is like the other day when the energy gets so intense and it's all positive and good mm -hmm. that it just overloads the system. And I yeah. guess at a higher level, we're trying not to overload the system. Mm -hmm. Basically, <laughs> but it's, I think people are going to be surprised. I think it's going to surprise even me. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's, what's got me excited. Yeah. I'm trying to stay open. Mm -hmm. it's i'm with you it's a little bit it's a little bit freaky to me um because in order to, to be open mm -hmm. the more time that goes on i have to let go of more yeah. and more and more yeah and and it never fails when i let go it gets filled back up mm -hmm. right away and it's weird because the things that I'm letting go of actually become better yeah. too, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, but it's a little bit freaky, you know, having to let go, let go, let go. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I know what you mean. It's uh, certainly scary at first too. Yeah. I think you're going to lose yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, the, the linear is going away. So you mm -hmm. can go through, like I went on a spirit walk for, about two years processing stuff. Yeah. And, but I have gone through even in the last month, whatever, maybe two times, three times, mm -hmm. gone through something very intense that might have lasted a few hours or a few minutes and it felt just as impactful, if not more impactful. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So, and, and it was the same type of, intense somewhat scary mm -hmm. you know beam me up get me out of here f this i'm tired of it i'm done yeah what's the point mm. yeah uh let's see here what else we got anybody else have any questions i don't know what other subject do we have anything else yeah. i dreamt of uluru vividly uluru is in australia very special place. I dreamt of Uluru vividly one night. An aspect of myself came through. All white with glowing eyes. Told me Uluru is awakening and the fires are the fires are a purification that are going on in Australia. Mm. And the Aboriginal peoples are arising in spirit. Yeah. I would think that the the the, the uh, native cultures that have stayed intact and the primitives and the aboriginal mm -hmm. um i would think they would you know they would they would be expanding as well obviously yeah and because of their connection they would have more of a presence that eventually would be right before our five senses i i feel that would happen yeah you know well and one thing too <laughs> past past month or so there's been a lot of news about different tribes and stuff all over the world. Yeah. Like stuff's just starting to pop up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
somebody was talking, we were talking to someone today, which brought something to mind. We're speaking of Uluru, uh, you know, places like Uluru or Kauai or, um, you know, Tibet, um, Shasta and all that, you know, kind of stuff. But um, we're talking to someone today and they reminded me of something that I heard three or four years ago and actually felt. So this is the fourth time, the fourth time I've been to Arkansas and not really planned, just that's the way it happened. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and there's, and anyway, she reminded me that, that there is a school of thought um, out there that, that this, there's some kind of energetic um, portal or core in uh, the Midwestern, you know, Arkansas, central area to the U.S. So that would be interesting. It makes sense to me. I feel like yeah. something happening here. Yeah. Well, and there's one thing that you, the Guardians looked at too, and tried to, fa I try to factor it in, are the ley lines, the yeah. Yeah. energy flows across the planet. And there's, there's two that flow pretty close by here. So, oh, there is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Candace, that girl I was telling you about, she says, and I think she's either talking about uh, Uluru or all these places. She says, mm -hmm. these are very, uh, very potent ley lines and portals that are becoming freed up as we are. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good comment. That makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I mean, Mother Earth is, hanging on too, <laughs> just like we are. Yeah. Uh, let's see. She also says there's many ancient sacred sites in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Dragon lines opening here in Ohio too. Uh, I don't understand this one. Arcturians and Pleiadian grandparents. Who is mother and father of Pleiadians or the offsprings of Arcturians? I don't know. I don't know too much about the galactic lineage. Yeah, I'm, I've not studied uh, galactic lineage or any of that. I've not honestly had much interest in it. No, no, not to me that offensively or anything. Course, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. It's just not been on my radar. No, me either. I've had memories of the Galactic War for a couple of years. Mm. Well, this is going back in 2014, 2015. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's a question. Uh, what do you make of significant places? Well, oh, what do you make of significant places where there are no ley lines? Mm. Um, I mean, how, like where? Yeah, I'm, that's I, I, you know, I think ultimately every I, there I must, think they're all pretty well either yeah. on or close to light yeah. lines, even even all of the natural like sites, uh, the sites that were formed by nature but people still find as religious sites. There's a lot of those are even on or near ley lines too, yeah, and it doesn't have to be on or near a ley line for it to be energized either. That's just a higher probability of it because it's closer to the main flow. Uh, Candace says, kind of answers that. She says the dragon lines are the key lines of the earth. And then uh, the space between the lines are powerful as well. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Oh, I had one too, and I can't remember what it was. Can't remember what it was. Let's see here. Uh, well, all right. Well, I guess we'll start winding it down. I'll just give it a keep it open for a couple more minutes. Anybody has any questions? We're going to hour and twenty, something like that. Now those numbers are trippy. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else we got. So. Tomorrow, we got some good shows coming up the next two days. Um, we got uh, Richie Sauter's coming on, Jason Estes is coming on, and three or four other really good ones. 
I will look at my private message panel, I promise you, as soon as I get off. Uh, Eve Alta says to Aaron, okay, and Aaron's got a question too, which is, that's where my question was. We must be having telepathy. Uh, anyway, Eve Alta says, you're sitting on a mountain in Arkansas, it must be very powerful. I've lived in quartz for the last five winters, another hot spot, a quartz site. Yeah. Um, and then Aaron said, this is what, and to the question about the space between ley lines and mm -hmm. um, can we not create and connect these sites? And I was just thinking, mm -hmm. if you're in a space where there's needs magic, I mean, I always just create it myself, you know? Yeah, I mean, back when, back when it was commonplace to do magic, the wizards would draw power from the ley lines regardless of where they were. Uh, just like time, space doesn't make much difference to magic. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, really the ley lines and the geographic points of them, it doesn't make a huge yeah. difference. It doesn't matter a whole lot. It's just the physical location of it yeah. or what we deem the physical location because of what we see and feel. But yes, you can, you can create little like focal points or uh, I sometimes refer to them as uh, mana wells. And what they'll do is they'll tap into the ley lines or into the earth and they'll draw energy out yeah. of the earth. Yeah. And that's, that's what that circle, that yeah. crystal circle. So you're pulling, is. yeah, you're pulling, it's there. Mm -hmm. It's the bottom line. It's there. You yeah. can pull it. You can, yeah. It would make sense to me. And it only makes sense to me too, that, uh, yeah, we, we're all coming into that creative dragon, creative energy, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it. And yeah, if, if you're in a spot, that's, that's where I, you know, not knowing what I was doing, but if I was in New York City, I didn't have any money, mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't get out in nature, I go find a tree and then just create a portal. And yeah. then, you know, wake up the next day and boom, some a miracle would come, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and that's the way I, the way I can remember it. Jamie says, uh, Jamie Hodges, our crazy friend up in the Northwest says, I have a question. When are we going to have a party? I feel we should be flipping, having fun and celebrating. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm yeah, celebrating. That's right. I have been partying. Yeah. It's it's all finally starting to really come together in a very visible sense. Yeah. So believe uh, it or not, I am partying. That's right. That's right. Energetically. Mm -hmm. And physically a little and bit. And physically. <laughs> um, <laughs> Milana, my dear sister from Kauai, comes back and says... And happy birthday, Milana. She had a birthday this month. Oh. She's 28. Nice. I have been at it too long to give up now. Feeling it in my bones. It's near. Uh, <laughs> Liana says, thanks for the conversation. I'm not alone. There is intelligent life out there. Absolutely. Uh, it just takes some looking sometimes. Right. Let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. This is here's another TL. It says, guys, crystalline grid supersedes the old ley lines that were manipulated. Arkansas is important crystalline bed to the new earth grid. New earth grid is online. All right. Now here's there. There are people out there that are working in groups like the guardians mm -hmm. did when you first that are working in groups. Um, so this is kind of to that point. Uh, Candace says, so coming together in that collective power, these lines and places were once used against harmony, used just like a dam and siphon, used for reversal energies, but they are being freed up with our support and the galactic support. Um, I like this, Terry says, that this platform is a powerful space and a ley line we were co-creating. So back to what you said about no time and space, mm -hmm. that's true. It doesn't have to be a two-dimensional, three-dimensional object or whatever. Right. Um, let's see here. I think we're pretty much party on. Uh, TL says, ultimately we, our active hearts are the crystalline grid. Here we go again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see. Is it the... Okay, 
uh, Sita Devi says, isn't isn't the reason we are transforming from carbon based to crystalline based from the connection form the connection to the earth grid or have, has a part in it, I guess. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it all ties together, all kind of goes hand in hand. It's like I've said before, just different steps in the process. Yeah. So a couple of people made reference to the platform and thank you and Pia, thank you. And thank you everybody for your continued love and support and contributions. And we're over here, mostly Aaron is working on the, uh, the technology of the world's first independent universal cache, 24 seven, 365, multiple channels. And it is, uh, it is a, uh, uh, an inner an intersection of ley lines, multiple ley lines that's due to everybody that participates, comes on, that comments that that supports it energetically. So yeah, we're looking to expand it and uh, we're looking to support Josh and people like Josh who want to um, develop their own channels and shows and that type of thing. So if you would just keep sending the great energy and we'll keep working hard to expand it. And, uh, and Geraldine says, thank you. Much gratitude to Todd Morgan and the beautiful Pearson family. And that would include the uh, matriarch Pamela, where the <laughs> yeah. rubber meets the road. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. We're good? Yeah, I think so. All right. Peace out, everybody. This is good. Yeah. Yeah, hour and a half. Nice.